Hey everyone, this is Louis7, and for this video I want to share why I'm excited for the upcoming Update 29 Wildwood in the Lord of the Rings Online. So at the time of this video, the update only had its first beta build, and we do have a little bit of background information from it, but basically what there actually is in that all just is exciting to me, and I wanted to take the opportunity to share why that is. And I will also be talking about a little bit of my hopes for the update as well. But I should point out the background gameplay is a mix from stuff I have have already done in the beta, so it is a little bit limited because currently Bulroar is closed and I couldn't get anything new as we do await the second beta round. But to get started, the very first reason I'm excited is because the update is focused on non-level cap content, as in it introduces the new Wildwood area to Breland which is all level 45 content. I love low level content in Lotro, but I have also played through the questing areas there so much that it usually takes a while for my interest in leveling a new alt say to kind of recharge and rejuvenate. So for me this is something new to an old era and it is something that makes me interested in my low level characters again or even leveling a new alt to go there. Which, while that excites me, it actually also gives me the pressure of actually having to choose an alt that I do want to go through Wildwood, so that's a decision I still have to make. But we can go ahead and move on to the second reason, which is because of the actual content in the update that we have previewed in the first beta. So I should point out, in betas I don't like to do questing or really spoil any of that type of stuff for myself, but just while exploring the new area, seeing some of the quests but importantly not doing them, I think they look like they could be really fun and that's pretty much all with the questing to again avoid spoilers that I want to share. But another thing here is a lot of recent questing content in Lotro has been super fun to me. I feel like there was a long period where everything felt super linear and basically had the flow of go here, do this, now go there, do that, now move on to the next camp, kind of going on like that forever. But I think really starting with the Minas Morgul expansion especially, the flow seems a little bit more open as you can carve your own path and your character creates their own story. I personally like that questing style a whole lot more. And I guess here I'm actually just more hopeful that Wildwood continues this trend and based on the little bit I saw in beta it looks like it will. So that is exciting. But there are also two other parts of content in the update and the first I want to cover is the new instances and this might be one of the things I'm most excited for which is the two new three-man instances and they do have solo versions and this will be some minor spoilers for y'all but one of them is in the old forest which i definitely think is a say dangerous enough area for an instance and the other is forest shell which is one of my favorite zones in the entire game so that is exciting to me as well i will say that i have done the old forest one but as of recording this video i have only like peeked into the forest shell one basically but anyway, new instances, that is always a good thing to me, and these do appear to scale below level 130, which is also exciting. I suspect level 45 will be the minimum, I'll have to actually confirm that when I go into the beta again or when the update is actually released. But I just think having new instances also available for lower levels is very exciting to me because, as I mentioned earlier, I just love low level content in Lotro, but I also really love low level group content, and even the small addition of two three mans does excite me, especially if the reward structure is good with that. But for the last type of new content we are getting, that is missions. So missions were off to a rough start in the War of Three Peaks in my opinion. I made a lot of videos on that and even now I think the system as a whole could use some not necessarily say many improvements but a couple major improvements mainly with the reward system I still think. But setting that aside, the content and missions themselves is like a super short dungeon crawl of sorts and having more of those that are relevant to the Wildwood area is indeed exciting to me. I will be very interested to see uh, what areas are actually explored, if they're all in the Wildwood or they actually go out kind of like the instances, say into the old forest, uh, Forestal, Evendim, or any place like that that's nearby. That would be super exciting, but I'm also interested in seeing the rewards available for the new missions and I do hope that if there is a reputation faction associated with them, like the War of Three Peaks mission, there is the Gabalaka, I just hope you actually get enough reputation from running through the missions to barter for stuff and rank up, unlike the Gabalaka faction from War of Three Peaks missions again. 
But either way, with that, the missions are exciting to me, and it is something I'm going to be looking forward to running through in Update 29. Moving on for the third reason I am excited for the update is we have the new Wildwood area itself. So recently I made a video taking a journey through Wildwood and just exploring the new landscape and features a little bit and with kind of how it connects and blends with the surrounding areas of Bree, the Shire, Evendim, and North Downs. So the area itself is inside and a part of Breland, but there's some noticeable North Downs influence which is appropriate for the region, and really I think the place is actually fairly unique in Lotro somehow, even though there's like tons of landscape and just tons of zones thinking throughout the entire game, but I think it is overall true to the Bree zone as a whole. But it is still new, and as I mentioned, a fresh take maybe on a hilly forest essentially. And as I mentioned in my journey video, it also gives me kind of Minecraft nostalgia, so I just overall think it will be actually be very relaxing and peaceful feeling, even though there are tons of like orcs and dangerous threats there, which that does give it a little bit more of a thrill factor, I suppose, other than just being peaceful. But I guess really the point here is I am excited to go on an adventure throughout the zone, because it's well built looking, at least from the beta, as far as landscape and scenery goes. And this of course should work in combination with the questing, so I'm really hoping and excited for the questing in the zone for it to be an adventurous area. But we can go ahead and move on to my last and fourth major reason I am excited for update 29. And that is actually the improvements we have already seen compared to some previous major updates in the game. So notably, update 28 War of Three Peaks was pretty controversial before its release. There was a little communication from Standing Stone Games and it was quite a rough beta. And there was even practically no information on like the mini expansion tag with that update. And I made a whole video on that titled Update 28 is very weird because it was so odd to me. But compared to that, from the lead up to the update to the first round of beta, we have better information on the betas and their purpose, as well as more just say overall communication from Standing Stone Games on the update. Even after preparing this video, actually, there have been a lot of forum posts from developers just sharing information, not necessarily even directly tied to the beta or update 29, but it's just good to see overall more communication, even from the developers view as well. So just overall, I think things are looking good on this front so far, and it does help me be excited at least. I just really hope this continues in the future. And by now we have covered the four big reasons on why I'm excited for Wildwood based on what we have and my limited playtime in the beta so far, but one thing you've heard me say a few times, actually a lot of times, was I am hopeful for something, and even the hope itself makes me excited actually, but for the last section I want to share what some of my hopes are for this update that we have not covered yet. So first here, I hope there is at least some minor challenge in the content. So low levels are generally easy in Lotro, especially compared to certain level ranges that have significant stat jumps at high levels, for example like West Rohan and Mordor used to be that way, I think Minas Morgul is now kind of that way but not as extreme, but anyway. Having something for low levels that provides a little bit more of a challenge I think would be very nice to me at least, I don't know that most people feel that way, but moving on from that, the second thing I hope is the reputation grind is not too bad like many recent factions in Lotro. And for some people I actually think this could be a make or break factor of the update. And I know I personally would not look forward to grindy content, especially not grindy content locked behind dailies and weeklies that are further locked behind reputation gating. I am also not a big fan of time gating, which is kind of what dailies and weeklies can do. Dailies and weeklies could also just be supportive to running through content. But I really hope we don't have time gating and heavy reputation gating as it sounds like. It's probably my biggest concern, I could even make a whole video on this, but we can set that aside for now and move on to my third hope, which is that there are a lot of deeds in Virtue XP. This is honestly just to help with the grind we have now a little bit, I think anything like that is good, but considering there are also two more levels of virtues available, it would be nice, and I think with all the dailies and weeklies we just talked about and repeatable content like that, it could be a perfect opportunity for those to include a small amount of virtue XP as a reward, kind of like how I think missions could reward like, it doesn't even have to be that much, they could reward like 10 virtue XP, that's super tiny, but it's something just a little bit to help for repeated running of these repeatables that you might want to run for other things anyway, and help with the virtue XP grind but 
along those lines, let's move to my fourth hope, which is that I hope we do have a good source of legendary item scrolls. This is a hot topic right now, of course, in the game and outside the game as well, just in the community. But I hope you can maybe get a lot of legendary scrolls in the new instances. That would be a good opportunity for those. And I even think they could drop a few per run at max level or maybe at least very cheaply available for barter for whatever new currency. I assume they're making a new currency that you can get in the instance and they could do that. So loot tables aren't all funky for lower level runs, but then the max level characters can barter for these empowerment scrolls. And they could even, this is also another thing that really could be saved for another video, but they could even have it so you can spend, say, more of the new barter tokens for higher max tier scrolls of empowerment with the new system they have ever since the, I think it was like update 28.3, uh, where they changed all this. They could actually have it so it's kind of like that. You spend more tokens to get higher max tier scrolls, but we'll set that aside as well. And with the last thing, it's another grindy topic, just a big theme, I guess, for my hopes here. But I am not a fan of the trait point system in Lotro, but if the system stays the way it is, as in you get trait points from things other than just raw leveling, which I think is really how you should get your trait points, I do hope they add some trait points in this update. It's um, honestly, not too likely, but it's one of my more extreme hopes and is actually going to be my second to last one here. But I think with the system as it is, at least having more options would be good if we were not to somehow get a huge like overhaul in this update, which would be more of a dream than a hope, I guess you could say. But uh, finally, moving on to the last hope, and that is that this exciting feeling and good work from SSG, I really hope that continues leading up to and through the entire release of Wildwood. That would be very nice. And by now we have covered everything for the video on why I'm excited for the update and some of my hopes as well for the update. I am interested in what you all think about this update so far, so please do comment below. I will appreciate reading those. And as far as this video goes, I hope you all enjoyed. And I do actually want to point out I'm using a new little foam cover for my microphone. If you notice the audio is better or worse, you could also let me know on that. I would appreciate that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video or learned something even about update 29, please consider liking and subscribing for more or becoming a channel member to support the content. And thanks for watching, everyone.